This is the audio I see used in the ColecoVision game console. It's the SN76489. Uh, this one's got a little bit of a crack in the top left hand corner. I bought a bunch of these off of eBay. I bought 40 of them. They were nice and cheap because um, I usually buy like £15 or £14 worth of um, stuff if I'm buying it just so it comes in below the customs thing, uh, threshold. But this, th these have all been reclaimed because I guess they're probably not making them anymore. This one doesn't work. It was the first one I took off to try and test. But the other ones seem to work okay, or well, the ones I've tr tried anyway. So in this video I'm going to show actually running this from a Raspberry Pi because I just wanted to test the ICs, see what they were capable of. Ultimately it go in my Z80 project because I want to hopefully get that running ColecoVision cartridges ultimately. Uh, but that get, that's the next stage of the project. So on the bench here I've got a setup where I've, I'm using a Raspberry Pi over here to actually run the chip. Uh, but the chip has to run at kind of about, usually runs about three and a half, four megahertz. My system runs at four megahertz. So I've got a crystal oscillator here. I just use for doing some tests. I can plug it into uh, circuits if I need to, a quick oscillator. I've got the chip here, which is under test and I've taken off all the leads. Lucky enough, I'll go through the data sheet a bit later. But lucky enough, they're all outputs. So I don't need any level shifting because they're TTL logic. So the 3.3 volts actually acts as a, a logic high and the 0 volts acts as a logic low. So uh, there's no issues with interfacing to the Raspberry Pi there. There's only one um, lead which goes from, or would go from, from the chip to the Raspberry Pi, which is uh, tells it the Raspberry Pi when it's ready to receive signals. But you can ignore that. I haven't got, got that plugged in here because normally that's just like tells the CPU to wait while it's doing, processing its stuff. But on this, uh, because the, the Raspberry Pi is so fast, I can just put a delay in anyway. So I'll just go through the uh, Python test script quickly before I actually uh, run the test script and, uh, and go through some of the, the um, features of the actual sound chip and hear what, what the sounds are. Uh, so I've got just, like I say, a simple py Python script. Um, so at the top, I've got this clock period here. Uh, but I don't actually use the clock period because um, the clock is actually generated from that 4 megahertz crystal. Uh, when I initially set it up, I set up the, the Pi to, to actually create a, um, a clock signal. But Python under Pi is uh, not fast enough to ge generate a decent enough clock signal. Um, if it were just on using C or something like that, it probably would be okay to generate the clock signal as the Pi, pi is such a fast uh, machine. These top uh, pins, which are defined, um, I've commented those out because I'm not using them so you see the bottom one is the clock signal which is the last one I just commented out just to show which ones are in use and which ones are not and so these are the actual uh, output signals which go to the chip and these are the ones which I use so the chip enable the write enable and then there's the eight data bus pins they're all outputs so you don't have to worry about any inputs or anything all the logic uh, is fine, so you don't need to level shift or anything like that. So then I, I went through the data sheet and I defined some constants just to make things more understandable in the Python script. So there's registers within the chip and there's these ones. Uh, one for each of the channels um, for the frequency of the channel. And then the attenuation. Uh, and the attenuation is actually the volume level, but it's kind of the reverse. So the attenuation has 16 levels. So if you enter a value of F, which is a value of 15, that's the most attenuation. So that's actually the that's actually turning the sound off. And then if you enter value 14 or E, as you'll see in the script, um, then it'll be level one, so it's very quiet. And then it goes up to um, eight, which is midway. Uh, and then if you go to volume, uh, attenuation level zero, that's the loudest. So it's kind of uh, reverse thinking for the volume level. Uh, then I've got, so at the start of the, the very first bit of the command that you send um, indicates whether it's a one byte or two byte instruction. There's only one two byte instruction, which is set, setting the frequency. Uh, so you set, you, the first bit of, the, of that instruction is a one to indicate it's the double byte instruction. And then the second byte of that instruction, you set bit seven to a zero uh, to indicate that it's the second byte of that instruction but all other commands just have this um, data one or to indicate it's a one byte instruction. 
Uh, so the noise channel, there are two types of noise, there's periodic and white noise. Uh, and there's several different um, rates of noise. So there's 5, 12, 1024, 2048. And then the third, the fourth and last one is you can set it to have the rate that's set by the frequency of channel 3. Uh, you can still use channel 3 as an audio, as a, a um, tone as well, if you want to. You can set the volume to, to zero if you don't want to hear it, or if you want to actually have the tone as well as the noise, you can set that. Um, it's, I guess there's probably uses for that, but it's quite that makes it most versatile. I've just set up this array of some of the pins, the data pins, just so that it's easy, easier for me to set those values when I set it in, in the function I've created. So I've just got initialization function at the top uh, and it just sets up the GPIO stuff just to the mode that I like and uh, set warnings off and then I just set up all of, all of the pins for output. And then I've got a function to write data uh, and I just... Um, so when you write data you take the chip enable low and then the write enable pin low Give it, because the Pi is a lot faster than the IC wants to be, give it a little bit of a sleep. And then take the chip enable high and then write enable high. Now, before I call this function, I've set up the data pins as I want them. So that all this function does is a click, uh, clock in the data value I want into the register I want in the actual chip. And then at the end, I just do another sleep as well to make sure that things don't happen too, too rapidly as well. And that those delays mean that I don't have to monitor the input from the chip so I don't need an input channel which is handy because that means I, I would have had to have level, level shifted that um, so so like I say so that last function you saw this this function here I've commented out clock because I no longer use that uh, the last function where I actually clock the data in this is where I set the data to up in, the, in this particular function set data bus it just takes a data value which is a byte uh, and it just displays on the display what the value is it's going to set and then it just output sets the output pins to whatever values needed for each bit of that byte and then these functions are the actual when we look in the data sheet you'll be, each one of these is a command in the data sheet so setting the register so this first one is to set the frequency of a channel and you take uh, and you pass it which channel register you want to set and then the frequency value and it sets up the frequency it, it splits up the frequency value between the first and the second byte so this is the two byte command that I was talking about and so it has that data byte one and data byte two value and it's only in the first byte you tell it which register you're sending uh, setting and then in the second byte it's just the frequency value the second part of the frequency value uh, then the next command is set channel atten atten attenuation, which is basically setting the volume of the channel. So I send in the, the register, I want the att attenuation register, and the vo I call it volume level. It's, more correctly, it would be called attenuation, but it makes more, it just easier to understand by saying, calling it volume. Uh, and then that just then sets up the register uh, and volume value in the byte, and then writes that byte to the chip. And then the last thing you can do is set up the source of noise for the noise register. Now there is only one register, but I pass it in as a, uh, sort of manually anyway. So um, then the noise type, and then there's um, there's white noise, and then there's what they call periodic noise, uh, and then the noise source, which is the rate of the noise. So there's a fixed values five twelve one zero two four two zero four eight, or you can take the value from uh, whatever the frequency of um, channel 3 is. So, okay, so this is the actual main part. And all I do is, uh, when I run this, so I'll run this now, and you'll hear the stuff as I go through the different types of um, sounds that there is. Uh, and I'll just change the value, and then rerun it, and change the value, and rerun it. The first thing I'll do, so these, I've set all the attenuation values to off, initially so that when I run it everything is is, is off so it's I, it's already in this silent state anyway so I'll just turn this first channel on so this sets channel 1 frequency 
and it sets it to the that's the biggest value you can have which is the lowest note uh, and this is uh, the attenuation value so that it's f is silent so if I just put half volume first of all so to see what the um, half volume level is so I'll just turn up my amplifier a bit so that is half volume but of course you can adjust your amplifier to uh, make it louder or quieter so if I could just go back and I change it to zero which is the loudest so so you get a, a, a 16 levels of control of the volume of each channel and if I now turn on the second channel and I, I've got it at um, a frequency of uh, 200 value I make that same volume level so now you can hear two frequencies if I turn off the first channel now you just hear the second channel frequency so what I'll do is I'll get all three channels going so and if I make this third channel on and so that there are all the channels going so I'll just turn them off one by one So as I say, there's no envelope control over the sounds. They're, I think they're quite pleasant sounds. They're better than the BP sound you get out of a BP speaker. And uh, and you can play chords, obviously, because you've got three tones you can play at the same time. Or you can play, I guess, three kind of a bass and a, a treble kind of instrument type thing. I'm not really, I've never really done much computer music, so I'm not very knowledgeable about this stuff. But here's, I'll go through, the, the, finally, the noise function. So if I set this a half volume and if I set it now at full volume so I, I try and find a volume which is uh, reasonable for so I can speak as well as you can hear the hear the sound. Um, so this at the minute is coming from channel three. So I can actually turn on channel three at the same time. And so you can hear the the frequency, and you can change the frequency, and it changes the type of noise and and tone. So if I turn off the tone and um, just change the frequency so the the higher up the frequency you go the more it sounds like kind of white noise so if I go to That's the highest pitched white noise you can get on, on using channel three. But now, um, if I just silence that again. Okay, so uh, as well as white noise, so let's go to um, the other types, the other rates of noise, so the fixed rates of noise, 512. I've got to turn it on, of course. So they're the different rate, fixed rates of noise you can have. Uh, and then there's the um, what they call periodic noise. So I spelled that right. Okay. 
So it's kind of got. So it's kind of got a, um, a tone to it as well as having a kind of a noisy overtone to it. Uh, I'll go through the other periodic value, the fixed periodic no no noises you can have. So that's a run through of all the, all the features of the chip. I think I've gone through pretty much every combination that you can have. Uh, so if, if you like write a program, you can set up a program to like, play music and stuff. It's the chip that's using the ColecoVision, so I'm interested in getting this into my project and running. It should, should be easy to, to um, wire up because you just have a chip select which you just decode from one of your addresses and everything else is, is all, all there because the data bus just we should connect straight up to it. And the the output pin of it, which is telling it when it's ready, that goes that, according to the data sheet, that just goes straight to the weight pin on the on the um, CPU. So that all handles the weighting automatically. You don't have to do anything in, in software to do the weighting. So you should be able to use it just like a, a standard sound chip, just by setting the setting output to a particular port. So this is the data sheet for the IC, and it's a very simple data sheet. There's not much to it. Uh, I'll just like flick through it quickly. It talks about using a four megahertz clock, um, but there's another version of the IC just down here. It talks about where you can just use um, 50 kilohertz or 500 kilohertz, something like that. Uh, but the four megahertz one is the one you'd use for a Z80 CPU, Z80A. Uh, it just goes through the standard kind of stuff. It tells you how to calculate the frequencies of um, the notes that you want to calculate based on the clock frequency you're using to drive it. I think the ColecoVision may be a three and a half megahertz clock for that. Uh, certainly, other computers of the time, like the Spectrum, tended to use three and a half mega, around three and a half megahertz. I think. Uh, then it talks about um, the values you can set in the different registers uh, and what how what the binary values of those are. And these are the registers that you can actually set here. And this is the format of each register. So you can see the first one is a two byte one where you set the frequency uh, and then set in uh, the attenuation and the setting noise at the very bottom, I think it is. And the noise and then the attenuation at the bottom. And it just talks about how you actually clock stuff into it. Um, it will, if you just connect up to your processor, I reckon it's prob it'll probably clock stuff in right but there's not it's a very simple system in that if you take the chip enable down then the right enable down then chip enable up and the right enable up as long as it's down for the period of 32 clock cycles or when the ready um, signal indicates that the um, IC is read the data uh, then it's all, then the data is clocked in so it's not not complicated to actually handle that and it just talks about the, the uh, pins and how they're basically all inputs apart from the audio output so you can just put that send that straight to a an amplifier uh, and also the output is the radio signal so uh, apart from that everything's in uh, and if you're using 3.3 volt system um, anything you send into the chip it will auto should automatically recognize that as a logical one as a 3.3 volt signal it just talks about these basically about the values like you get on any other data sheet and the like there's a test circuit down here as well where you just I, I think it's just for testing that the ready signal goes high I don't, I'm not sure it does anything else apart from that then it talks about the internals of the, the device and that is basically the data sheet 